guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another How About Them Celtics video. Sam and I are here recording on Sunday, January 14th. And we have a trade to talk about. Uh, not a Celtics trade, but instead a Pistons trade. Pistons Wizards uh, made a, what is this, like the, the bottom feeding Our Pistons. Olympics. Yeah. You watch your mouth. Yeah, well, if I was in front of you, I'd strangle realistic. you, or at least I'd do my best. Let's be realistic here. Pistons traded Marvin Bagley, Isaiah Livers, and two second round picks to the Wizards. For Danilo Gallinari and Mike Muscala, two former Celtics uh, traded in the deal that landed Boston. Kristaps Porzingis. Now, you may be wondering, Jack, Sam, why does this matter? Why should Celtics fans care? This doesn't mean anything other than they are former Celtics. Well, now that they have been traded to another team, they're eligible to be traded back to the Celtics and or signed with mm. the Celtics on the buyout market. Uh, they were not eligible to be traded back from the Wizards, uh, nor could the Celtics have signed them because they need to go through two teams uh, to get back to the the first uh, team that originally traded them um, in the same calendar year. But since they are now technically uh, on the Pistons, who knows if they'll actually suit up. This seems just to be a salary dump for the Pistons because Marvin Bagley kind of stinks. Um the Celtics can go get them. The question is, should they? So we're going to take a look at the stats. Uh, we, can, we can discuss it, you know, say which one you'd rather want more, et cetera, et cetera, and come to an agreement. But Gallinari, Muscala, now available for the Celtics to trade or sign in the buyout market. So I just took a brief look at Gallinari because he is the, the more appealing name of the two. Ass. This season, not very good. <laughs> uh, the shooting splits are down. He's played 26 games for the bottom feeding Washington Wizards, who won yesterday, by the way. Uh, but he's at seven points, about three rebounds, and a little over an assist a game on 43.5% from the field. And the really eye opening one, 31.3% from three. If the Celtics were to bring back Gallinari, even technically he did never shoot up for the Celtics, it would be because he's a bigger guy that can shoot threes. Can he? I. I oh. disagree, uh, and I'm I'm happy. You disagree in what sense? In, in the sense that if they bring him back, it would be for nothing more than come back and win a title. I don't think either of these guys would get anything close to minutes on the Celtics team. Well, I'm just, just I'm just, off. I'm just messing with you. No, I mean, <laughs> no, they <didn't>. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. It's a video for a reason. Um, listen, uh, I'm trying to look at Gallinari's stats because I think the important. Oh my God, sorry, I'm watching the Cowboys game and the Cowboys are. Garbage. Uh, yeah, Cowboys not doing well. I mean, they listen, just threw a pick. Football, they they but... just had a pick six again. <laughs> I don't. Just... I don't support the Cowboys. Thing, thankfully, <laughs> me neither. Um, what I was gonna say is, uh, I do think it's important context for Gallo shooting his splits, which again, forty three point five, thirty one point three is very bad. Uh, however, he is playing on perhaps one of the worst teams in the NBA. So, uh, taking a look at his wide open percentage. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very good either. He's shooting. Shit. Muscala and Gallinari both shooting 31% on their wide open threes this season. Uh, the totals uh, are pretty low. They're shooting 10 of 32 and 9 of 29. So just not very good shooting nights overall for either of them. Now, they're not getting regular minutes. I, I don't think Gallinari is playing 15 minutes a night, and I I'm pretty sure it's sporadic if I had to guess. Like, he, he's been hurt. He has not suited up for the past, what, what is this, five, six games for that the Wizards? they said your, your time is, is up, buddy. Yeah. And as Back for bags. Muscala, he's averaging around the same 14 minutes and uh, – yeah, he, he didn't play for a big chunk in there. And then since he's been back, uh, he's had actually a, a few OK shooting nights. And then he went absolutely ice cold um, the past X amount of games for them. So I personally they told him that's what it was. Yeah. They told him his days were numbered <laughs> and his eyes got all wide. And he was like, shit, dude, like, what am I going to do? Well, he was probably when they told him his days was number. He was probably like, finally, get me off this team. And then no, they said, no, no, the no they, they, yeah, they like elbowed him in the side. They were like, your days are numbered. And you shouldn't get excited. <laughs> we have a it's few like, destinations what? and it's not pretty. Like, damn, am I going to Charlotte or Detroit? This is not, only, not only like is he going to play for the Pistons, but like obviously it's the middle of January and Detroit is very cold. Like it, it's not like he's like at least getting sent to, I don't know, a dumpster fire like the Lakers. Like where it's yeah. like, oh, like the weather's nice. Like, yeah. no, you don't even get that part of it. At least he could hang out there. No, but of the two, I might almost... 
for the storyline, I would rather the Celtics get Danilo Gallinari. It did feel like he genuinely wanted to be here, uh, and it kind of stinks that he was never able to suit up. From a basketball perspective, it kind of makes sense to get a guy like Muscala more than Gallinari. You already have a Gallinari and Sam Hauser, and like a better one, like realistically, like a better version of Gallinari. At least with Muscala, you can run some of those big man looks you want. Uh, with a guy who is taller and can play a little bit of a center. He's not a good defender, but like you can like some of these Luke Cornette double big lineups, right? Like if you wanted to have a floor spacer on the floor with Cornette at the big man spot or with, with uh, Horford, like you could put Muscala there. I don't think either of them play in the playoffs. Obviously, I don't think anybody the Celtics trade for play in the playoffs at this point. I think they like the rotation they have until they get Kuminga. <clears throat> St- video over no <laughs> <Video> jackets <laughs> and recording uh, um it'll be fun though like I-, I think both are fun options there are new options that we haven't been able to talk about for the past x amount of months because yep. uh, i mean they weren't available to the celtics i will say muscala's or three of his best recent games have come uh or three of his best games of the season have been recently um i guess if you want to say he's getting hot like yeah, this back. stretch right here where he was shooting above 40% from three. Uh, and they got a win in one of them, which is like yeah, unheard of for the Wizards. Um as for lot. no, as for uh Gallinari, again, he just he wasn't playing. He did have a f- oh, that's the free throws. I thought those threes. I got so hyped. I was like, oh, like four, four, four or five days. from yeah. three. Uh, this is probably his best game of the season. And wow, I, I mean, can you write it? Can you can we write this? His best game of the season was against the Pistons. Yeah. Pistons said give him we want him bring him in yeah they're doing the um, evens method of like oh this yeah. guy killed us let's go get him uh the nfl season is wrapping up and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, america's number one sports book right now new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that's 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose and the app is so easy to use and there are so many different ways to bet like Live same game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Muscala did have that like sick third quarter. I think it was the season finale last year where he had like 17 yeah. points in the quarter. <laughs> he just caught fire against Atlanta. So that was yeah. pretty cool. Like I I can't really get excited about Muscala because he was on the team last year and he never played and the team was maybe yeah. worse. But then this year there's more opportunity on the bench. Gallinari, I think there is the angle. It's like they've kind of like watched him get hurt and then traded him. So like there's some redemption arc type stuff for Brad if they really want to go into it. Because mm-hmm. in in the period of time after the, the season and we were talking about potential Celtics offseason trades, we would mention his name and I was like, I don't know if they're ever going to trade him because that'd be messed up. Like they, they just kind of got this Isaiah Thomas stink off of him with Danny leaving. Do they really need another era of GMs to be like having a guy's dad be like that, that organization's terrible. I don't want my son playing for him. I don't Shout think the Celtics, Davis I don't think the Celtics are ever too concerned about that, especially in the context of Gallinari. Cause it's like, you have a chance to get to Porzingis. You get it. Um, it is what it is. I will say, I think the other important aspect to note is there is being a veteran Muscala 32, and then there is being veteran at 35 years old for Gallinari. Like at some point you just lose the step. Like Gallinari isn't moving the way he did, uh, get him next to Al years ago in Atlanta. I'll teach him the ways just, I I just don't think he he would be playable in the, in the way the Celtics want to play. Um, And for what it's worth, I don't think Muscala would be very playable either. It's just, he is slightly more like better because he can at least give you shooting at the big man spot, which isn't something you have on the bench right now. So like in that context, it's all right. Um, As far as trades, I don't think a trade would make sense for either of them. Like Muscala makes 3.5 mil this year. So like maybe you just like a TPE, you throw a second at him, but like, as as harsh as this may sound, I don't think he's worth a second round pick right that's now. Like I, I just don't think it's worth a second round pick for a guy who's probably still a human not being, gonna, dude. That's fine. He's, he's not gonna play. Like like <laughs> trading a second round pick for a guy who's not gonna play just seems kind of pointless on a team where you have a, a good rotation already. Um, like, like you're not gonna give up draft capital for nothing at this point if you're Brad Stevens uh, and Gallinari. I believe I don't know the exact number of the Celtics trade TPE. Um, 
Gallinari makes 6.8 million. So I, I believe that's just above the TPE. Yeah. So the Celtics wouldn't be able to bring him in via the TPE. So it would have to be an actual trade. Um, yeah. I, I think the only way the Celtics get either of these guys would be through the buyout market. If Detroit does decide to let them walk, which possible, uh, I, I doubt. I mean, the, the Pistons are trying to add veteran talent. I just don't know if this is the veteran talent they had in mind. Um, it's okay. This, like first step yeah. in the process. Pistons will be back. Uh, as far as the Celtics getting either one of these guys goes, it's not that exciting. It'll be a sick yeah. thumbnail. I think of the former Celtics out there, these two are the least exciting to talk about. Gordon Hayward, somebody where learned this today, don't even know if he was to be traded, then bought out if the Celtics could get him because he might make too much money. Yeah, to be a bio guy him. thanks to the new CBA. So that dream is dead. Shout out to Jared, who's probably dancing hearing that. Uh, <laughs> But like Tice was always a fun idea when he was bought out, but it never happened. Mm. So I really don't know where you're going to go if you're the Celtics. It's not that exciting out there right now for you. I think you have a good team in front of you. Just whomp the Rockets by 30. And you have the Raptors tonight as you're hearing this. So there's plenty of time to just watch your guys go out there and play and play well. Peyton Pritchard has had a really decent stretch of basketball where He's almost like turning a corner as like, wow, he's pretty good. Like he can give you quite a bit off the bench. He can be uh, a decent, I don't know, three quarters of what Brogdon gave you last year. Maybe. I don't know mm. how crazy that is to say, but it feels like he has the skill set to be effective in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> Sam Hauser has been much better than I think any of us thought he would be in a full-time role. Mm -hmm. And as far as Cornette goes, he's just remained solid. Like the three guys that are the key bench pieces right now, are all doing just fine. There's no need to panic and be like, oh, got to give up picks. Got to bring in Gallinari again. It just, uh, other than the, hey, come come back, there's no there's no angle. Yeah, I don't think any of these guys, um, excuse me, yeah, would play over Pritchard, Hauser, Cornette. Um, be fun for the storyline, but uh, I just, I don't think it's feasible. Let us know what y'all think in the comments. Be sick uh, for a video. Like, just a, <laughs> There'll be like a breaking, <laughs> a nice breaking news video. We love those. Hey, I would not complain, but thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it. Subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Let us know what you think in the comments, uh, and I will let Sam wrap it up. Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. We're putting up videos every single day. We have videos like these. We have game recaps. We have the full-length pods. We have talk and sees with Bobby Kravitsky. We have little film breakdowns, and again, videos like these in the pregame streams half hour before each game we're here live you want to come hang out in the live chat it's a lot of fun we take your questions we have a blast you can also find us on spotify and apple if you follow us there you'll get the audio versions of the pods and the game recaps right to your inbox if you leave five stars on there we would appreciate it very much you can also reach out to us via email hbtcpod at gmail.com that is where we will read your emails from each pod we had a couple come in today so we'll be ready to go for tomorrow's recording um you can also get in touch with us on socials that how about them sees twitter instagram tiktok the facebook it's just the name of the podcast our pregame streams are there and on twitter if you want to follow jack on twitter his is at jack simone nba mine's at sam lafrance nba that's it for us bye jack, jack -o.